Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, a virtual tour of Flanders, Belgium, featuring Breck Putman, Senior Association Manager, North America for Visit Flanders. My name is Barbara Scafidio, and I'm the editor of Preview Magazine and moderator of today's webinar. Before we begin, just a couple of housekeeping items. During the presentation, feel free to enter questions in our question box. We'll gather them together and hold a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Don't worry if your questions haven't been answered. We will be providing Brett with all the questions so he can respond to you offline. If you miss something, the webinar is being recorded and you will receive a link via email to access the recording at your leisure. Everyone here today will receive one CEU from the Events Industry Council for attending. Webinar attendees get a voucher for free chocolates at IMAX America and are eligible to be selected for one of the following upcoming discovery tours to Flanders this fall or next spring. These education tours are three days uh, with three days accommodations and airfare included. The winner will be selected at the conclusion of the webinar and Brett will contact him or her directly. So that's it for me for now. Sit back and get comfortable. And Breck, take it away. Thank you, Barbara. Um, I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. Uh, thanks everyone for attending today's webinar on Visit Flanders on Flanders. Um, and before I start with the whole introduction about why meetings uh, should take place in Flanders, I do want to highlight one of the projects or the main project that our um, organization is actually uh, involved with and it's about something that should um, concern all of us and it is uh, travel to tomorrow and how will we travel to tomorrow um, on this first picture uh, you can see a, a huge plastic whale jumping out of the water in in um, in Bruges and this was a temporary art installation that was there for the Bruges uh, Triennial um, exhibition. And it actually depicts a, um, the largest sea mammal that we know, uh, but made out of five tons of plastic that was fished out of the oceans. Um, just to show as, as a strong reminder that today, as we are speaking, 150 million tons of plastic is swimming in our oceans. Um, and this powerful image to start the conversation about how we will deal with uh, climate change, social economic changes, uh, political changes, and how it will affect our travels and how it will affect uh, tourism as a whole. And as a tourism government organization, um, we wanted to be very proactive in our thinking processes around that. Um, we do strongly believe that tourism transforms. Tourism is a vehicle for uh, broadening horizons. Uh, we believe that tourism brings people together, is a good tool against uh, bigotry, uh, opens new perspectives, uh, creates learning opportunities. So we do like to stimulate tourism, but we want to have an active thinking process on how we will continue in the future. Um, there are numerous examples of European cities um, and cities and places around the world where there is a tourism overflow, um, often to the dismay of residents. And Flanders, tiny Flanders in the north of Belgium, we strive to maintain a balance between residents, visitors, communities. Um, now, we do not have all the answers. This is actually an open invitation uh, to all of you um, to join the conversation and to join this um, thinking process. Um, a few months ago, Visit Flanders did exactly that, and they brought together a number of um, CEOs, industry leaders, tourism professionals together uh, across the spectrum to think about the future of tourism and how to ensure a healthy balance between um, residents, visitors, um, and how to honor and maintain the natural riches that our destination has to offer, along with uh, keeping up the historic authenticity of, um, of, our, of our cities. 
So we are trying to create the tourism policy of the future. Um, now, to explain all of this a little bit better, I think it's a good idea uh, to show you guys um, a video. So let's have a look. Ik vraag me af wie morgen Vlaanderen bezoekt, wat die zal vinden, zal zoeken, wat die zal zijn, wie die zal ontmoeten. Gaan zij, de toeristen, vooral met veel en steeds meer zijn. Dat zijn veel opbrengsten, dat zeker. Maar worden we hier echt beter van? Misschien is de kost groter dan we denken. Hoe meer bezoekers, hoe beter. Of creëer toerisme net meer waarde door met minder te zijn. De ruimte krijgen om te ontdekken wat wij willen delen. Wat ons uniek maakt. Blijft ons erfgoed onze hou vast? Of worden het echte ontmoetingsplaatsen met een verleden en een nieuwe toekomst? Of wordt alles straks platgelopen door horde bezoekers? Bezoekers die vooral zichzelf willen zien. En wie zijn wij die hier wonen en werken? Gulle delers? Maken we elkaar echt rijker? Of staan we enkel achter de kassa? Hoe maken we het verschil tussen echt en net echt? Ik ben hoopvol. Want elke reis brengt meer tolerantie. Opent onze blik op de wereld. Kennen en herkennen we die andere mens. Verstaan we net iets beter wat echt kostbaar is. De wereld verandert razendsnel. En wij en Vlaanderen moeten mee. Op zoek naar de juiste balans. Ik reis bewust naar morgen. Reis jij mee? So this um this gives you a little bit of an idea of how Visit Flanders um, is trying to deal uh, with the future. And one um, idea is already that tourism is just more than just economics. Uh, tourism is an interdisciplinary issue embedded in the very fabric of our society and infrastructure. So um, this is an open invitation for all of you to join the conversation. Uh, in the follow-up email, I will gladly share um, the link to this specific website that talks about these things. Um, there's actually taking a Travel to Tomorrow Summit uh, taking place in Bruges, Belgium, um, September 12 and 13. So those who are interested, uh, do follow up. So. This is a good segue to start talking about our um, meetings and incentives outreach, uh, especially in the United States. So we like to promote our region and create tomorrow's heritage along with you. Um, we, so Flanders. So Flanders is basically, for those who didn't realize yet, uh, Flanders is the Northern Dutch speaking region of Belgium. Here on the map, um, it's the yellow part um, that's highlighted. So you see Belgium is quite a small country um, within Europe. Belgium is about the size of Maryland, and then um, Flanders is about the size of Connecticut. So it's a very small surface, but with a lot to see and with a very uh, rich history, a history that's oftentimes um, a lot older than the country uh, itself. So Flanders is all about heritage um, and the best witnesses, vivid witnesses to that heritage are of course our majestic arts cities. Um, here you see them listed, uh, Bruges, Ghent, Antwerp, um, Mechelen, Leuven, uh, those are really our main cities. Uh, I will go deeper into detail about them a little later. Um, 
in terms of accessibility, the region is uh, easy to reach. Uh, from North America, we have daily direct flights from uh, New York, Washington, Chicago, Miami, uh, Atlanta as well. So um, quite, it's about a seven hour flight into Brussels. And then once you're in Brussels, uh, the other cities are quite easy to reach. Um, Antwerp, Bruges, Ghent, they're all less than one hour train right away. Um, from Brussels airport. Um, and then even if you have delegates coming in from other cities, uh, you see them here, Paris, Amsterdam, London, also those are less than a two hour high speed train ride away. Um, so accessibility is definitely one of our strong points, um, talking about our geographical location. Now, when we dive deeper into our cities a little bit, um, let's start with Brussels. Uh, Brussels is the capital of Belgium. It is also the capital of Flanders, and it's um, also home to NATO, and of course, capital of the European Union. 27 uh, states um, are represented in uh, the heart of Brussels. Um, every day so which means you have lots of uh, lobbying groups um, journalists uh, officials working and living in Brussels which makes it a very international city where a wide array of languages are spoken now what does that mean for your conference um, it means that our hotels and venues and um, conference centers have a large experience in hosting international groups and well, you shouldn't face too many problems. Um, pictured is the Square Meeting Center. It is um, a convention center that sits right above Central Station. So coming in from the airport, it's about 20 minutes. Uh, you walk out of the train station and there is the, uh, the glass entrance of the Square Meeting Center. Uh, the capacity is about um, 1,400 people uh, in the largest auditorium. <clears throat> So Square has definitely hosted uh, a number of um, significant conferences. Um, then the big picture is the Atomium with the nine spheres. Um, it was built for the World Exhibition in 1956. Um, it is one of our uh, monuments. You can compare it to the Belgian Eiffel Tower in terms of uh, significant monuments. Uh, actually, some of the spheres can be rented out for a private event. Um, each sphere can host up to, I think, about 100 people. Um, there's catering. Um, the monument sits about 15 minutes subway ride from um, the central station. And then right next to it is Brussels Expo, which is the country's largest uh, exhibition center. And then the other picture in the bottom is uh, the Brussels Town Hall, the main square, uh, UNESCO World Heritage. So history is never far away uh, when you're in the Belgian cities. And neither is the scent of waffles and chocolates. Um, you truly find those everywhere uh, in many of the Flemish uh, city, city centers. Um, good to notice is also you don't see any cars. So many of our city centers are pedestrian zones. Uh, only, um, which makes when you have your conference uh, in the city, you, it's an easy walk um, from your hotel in the city center to, for instance, uh, the square. Uh, so that gives a, a nice touch. Then we have Mechelen. Mechelen is a smaller city. Um, it sits about 15 minutes um, north of Brussels, in between Brussels and Antwerp. Um, it's uh, one of our historical cities. Um, it's known for its traditional craft beers. Uh, pictured in the bottom with the glass facade is uh, the local convention center, uh, which can host easily up to 500 people, so a smaller conference, but it used to be a brewer. So it is one of our um, heritage venues, as we like to call them. Um, same as the building in, in the, the big picture. Um, used to be a monastery and is, as we speak, being refurbished into a um, special meetings venue uh, where you can have conferences uh, and events. And then we have Ghent. Um, you may have heard of Ghent. Uh, Ghent is another one of our um, historical arts cities. Um, the larger picture shows you the castle of the counts. Um, 
it is a castle that's been there since the 9th, 10th century. Um, and the big room can be rented out for a special event uh, if you have um, as sort of an incentive group or something like that. Um, you can have a medieval dinner uh, and also visit the museum. And of course, you have some great views over the city from uh, the main tower. Now, what is Ghent known for? Of course, it's canals and it's historic buildings, uh, but Ghent is also a university city. Uh, Ghent is home to the largest university in Belgium, so um, many students um, bring to the uh, overall energy and atmosphere that is in the city. Um, picture below, you see a picture of the, the music festival that takes place in Ghent every year in July, it just finished. Um, and it truly is, uh, it's a free festival with stages across the city, um, bar stands, beer stands, um, really a fun place to be uh, year round, I should say. Um, Ghent has about 3,000 bedrooms in total, um, so they do accommodate easily um, meetings um, all around. The new convention center, the International Conference and Congress Center, is being refurbished. Um, it can host, uh, the auditorium is about 1,100 people, so um, they are stepping to the front as a convention city. The local convention bureau is a partner of ours and they are very active. Um, then we have Bruges, of course. Um, Bruges is similar to Ghent in terms of history. They were uh, competing cities in the Middle Ages with uh, the tapestry uh, industry mainly. And today, um, Bruges, just like Ghent, uh, really has a lot to offer in terms of uh, convention um, and meeting facilities. Also, they are building a brand new um, convention center, also with an auditorium of about um, 1,000 people. Uh, the hotel offer, all, they have about 5,000 bedrooms, um, but uh, in comparison to Brussels um, and Antwerp, Bruges and Ghent, their hotels tend to be a little smaller. So if you have a larger group, um, 500,000 people, they would be separated into different hotels. But as I said, city centers are um, car free, bus free. So it's easy to walk uh, from the hotel to the convention center, or why not use a horse tram or move your delegates uh, by boat on one of the many canals. Um, why not? It is possible. Bruges is actually one of the best uh, well-preserved medieval towns in Europe and the entire city center is listed as uh, World UNESCO Heritage. Bruges would be the furthest convention city out um, in terms of um, the Flanders region. It's about 80 minutes uh, from the airport by train. Um, but of course, we can also offer uh, coach transfers and stuff like that. Uh, things that the Convention Bureau also offers in Bruges, uh, you would be eligible to um, have a free welcome reception in the town hall, city signage. Um, so the fact that these smaller cities um, can make you very visible uh, when you have your conference in those places. Um, and then we have Limburg. Limburg is uh, on the other side, the east side of Flanders, about an hour from the airport. And it's really known for its uh, industrial heritage. Uh, and the big picture uh, shows you that. It's one of those venues that's also transformed into a meeting space, uh, ideal for a conference, beautiful industrial architecture. Um, but it's also really known for its beautiful nature and uh, fruit, uh, blossoming trees in the spring, um, great for biking, cycling. So nice region to consider. And then uh, Antwerp. Antwerp is our second uh, city in terms of size, uh, second city of Belgium, um, just 30 minutes from the airport. So Brussels airport sits north of Brussels and uh, we have established a direct express connection uh, into Antwerp city center. So very easy to get to. Um, right next to the central train station, you have the uh, Flanders uh, convention center. Flanders Meeting and Convention Center. This is the big picture that you see. Um, it's a historical building, but with a whole brand new wing attached to it. Uh, the main auditorium seats up to 2,000 people, and uh, many of the breakout rooms 
and uh, meeting rooms actually look out over the um, historical parts of the, the zoo of Antwerp. Now, the zoo of Antwerp is one of the oldest animal parks uh, in Europe, and the gardens are beautifully upkept, and um, the zoo can become um, an experience, can become part of your conference if you, if you wanted to. Uh, you can have a welcome reception in the Flamingo Garden, or have a morning run in the parks before it opens. Um, and by having your conference in the Flanders Meeting and Convention Center, you also contribute to the conservation program that the zoo has established. So um, CSR-wise, uh, you are a step ahead uh, organizing in uh, the Convention Center in Antwerp. Now, what else is Antwerp known for? Many of you probably know it. It's diamond trade. Uh, diamonds are one of the main exports in Belgium, um, and Antwerp is truly the global hub for the diamond trade. And then in the picture, um, in the top left of your screen, you see the port house. And the port house is um, where all the port activities are uh, together, and you see the top part is actually shaped in uh, a diamond um, so it, it makes it's really symbolic the building was um, designed by uh, Zaha Hadid the famous uh, architect um, so it, to, to really uh, put uh, Antwerp on the global map but also their port logistics and uh, all the industries uh, I think of technology uh, chemistry energy uh, Antwerp is really a front runner when it comes to those uh, and that brings me to the last fact or the one of the other facts of Antwerp, the fact that it's also a port city and um, was home to the Red Star Line shipping company um, that operated uh, service between Antwerp and New York and Philadelphia uh, prior to World War One, World War II, um, transporting uh, Eastern Europeans, oftentimes Jewish people, from Europe to North America. There's a lot of history there. Uh, when in Antwerp, I recommend visiting the museum or why not have your opening reception um, at the museum. Truly an experience, again, a very authentic um, way to welcome your guests, um, but while telling a story um, of the place where you're at. Highly recommend, and again, CVB, the Convention Bureau, uh, we can help you there. And then another city, uh, last but not least, we have Leuven. Leuven um, is... Um, home to Stella, the world's largest uh, brewery, uh, thanks to, uh, of course, all the mergers and acquisitions. Um, but the historic uh, breweries of the Stella, um, again, you can have your meeting, as you can see it in the picture, uh, again, gives a very authentic feel. Um, the beautiful building you see in the big picture is the City Hall, um, where you can also have uh, meetings and events. Um, so uh, we highly recommend you doing that. And then you see, of course, uh, a picture of students working hard. So uh, many uh, rooms of the university, we actually work very close with the university, not only in terms of uh, logistics, um, them putting their space available in summertime, uh, but also uh, their research uh, center and, and, develop, and their uh, professors um, to really connect your organization with um, the stuff that you're thinking about and the professor in the relevant field that can oftentimes help you connect uh, or find uh, relevant speakers um, or establish a program. Um, we really are the one-stop shop uh, to help you with all of these things. Um, so Flanders is all about heritage venues, as I highlighted uh, while we were go going over the cities. Um, we put a lot of... Um, um, you know, uh, how you say that, uh, accent. We put a lot of uh, highlights on the fact that you can really meet in uh, historical venues. Uh, oftentimes, it can be very distracting uh, for your visitors, as you see in the picture, but it is really uh, worth it. Um, if you want to find out more about our uh, heritage venues, um, follow the uh, address on uh, the slide, and you'll see a lot of more information. Um, but there are many examples. This is another beautiful example of uh, the monastery uh, in Ghent um, that opens its uh, historic spaces that is transformed into um, a 
meeting space, but all according to the standards that our government sets forward in terms of, first of all, sustainability, but also uh, state of the art technology that you can use. Um, and also the, the standards set by the industry council to have a real value uh, meeting space, but always in a unique historic setting. The ones that are pictured here are just some examples um, that we are working on. Now, are you ready to create tomorrow's heritage? Um, so Flanders is all about cultural heritage. Um, it is really in the fabric of our um, of our being. Um, here you can see uh, uh, specialists renovating um, parts of the Ghent altarpiece, um, and we really like to connect that science with uh, whatever your conference is uh, dealing with. So we are there to. Uh, find those links together and share our knowledge and have there be a valuable uh, exchange between you and us. Um, cycling is the national sport in Flanders, uh, like football and baseball is the national sport here. We live uh, for cycling, um, not only in terms of competition, but also just to move from point A to B. Flemish people, uh, Belgians, like to bike. Um, you see it also in our cities. Um, bike tours are recommended. So um, this is something to keep in mind. And of course, Flanders is home to top gastronomy. Um, you may or may not know that uh, Flan Belgium as a whole has more than 120 Michelin star restaurants, which is percentage-wise more than any other country in Europe. Um, so that's something you know to keep in mind it's not just waffles and chocolates and belgian beer but it's really also um very nice uh, high level food so bon appetit i would say um so we do like to connect truly our um old flemish masters think of the painters of rubens and van eyck and um our old inventors, but with the new ones. We like to connect the old and the new. And I'm going to give you some examples of people that are here to inspire us um, and your next conference. Uh, and we're going from fashion designers, uh, because of course, Antwerp is also a fashion design hub. Um, and we let some famous people speak uh, for themselves to really inspire you and the next team uh, of your conference. So here we have Ralph Simons, who is a famous um, designer in Antwerp. Um, here we have also Paul Janssen. Uh, he's the founder of Janssen Pharmaceutica, a big pharmaceutical company. Um, he can serve as an inspiration um, for research uh, that your association is doing, but also um, he's inspiring to many organizations that are in Flanders today active in the research of biotechnology and medical um, and we can connect you as a convention bureau with those research uh, centers. Um, another example is uh, the CEO of the Port of Antwerp. Port logistics are a key industry in Flanders. Not only the Port of Antwerp, you have the Port of Ghent, the Port of uh, Seabruges. So our region is truly a specialist and expert uh, when it comes to those themes. So again, if you have a conference in that field, we um, are happy to inspire you uh, in those industries as well and connect you with the relevant people. Um, and the final example we have, and it's a little not so well known, but Robert Caillou is one of the co-founders of the World Wide Web. And he is again, um, you know, one of our proud um, experts that are in Flanders when it relates to technology, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the future, future technologies. Um, so again, we, we like to make those connections and make you better connected when you come to Flanders. Now, I think uh, it all explains better in a small video. So um, let me just uh, switch to that. Paper. We use it to wipe our bottoms and to sign peace treaties. Everything starts with a piece of paper. Catwalks would be empty without that first sketch on paper.
just as there would be no one in the opera without a sheet of music. It can cure the sick. And open roads. Paper can move you, quite literally. But also figuratively. It connects cities across continents. Paper connects the dots when our memory fails. Paper is the past and the future. And even better, your future, which is still a blank page. Come to Flanders and fill it in at locations as inspiring as the conference itself. Be inspired at createtomorrowsheritage.com So this kind of uh, sums it together. Um, and so to finish uh, the presentation, I would just like to introduce you to our local uh, convention bureaus uh, that we are in partnership with. So if you are considering uh, coming to Flanders, um, we will uh, make those connections, not only in the fields of expertise, but also, of course, with the city officials of Ghent, Ostend, Bruges, Antwerp, Mechelen, Leuven, Limburg, and of course, uh, Brussels. Now, Visit Flanders itself, we have an extensive international network with foreign offices, regional management and representation offices. Um, so here you see the map. Um, so we have truly a global network. I, we do realize, because we realize that many of your organizations are also global, um, we like to point out that our network is there to help yours. This is our team. Let's meet in Flanders very soon, hopefully, um, and create tomorrow's heritage. Um, hopefully we'll meet before uh, at IMEX uh, next month, or actually just a few weeks away. Um, I'll be there uh, at the Belgian booth. Um, I hope you come to say hello, and, uh, and hopefully we can talk more and create tomorrow's heritage uh, together. Thank you very much for your attention. I uh, take it back to Barbara. Thank you, thank you so much. Fascinating, fascinating. And I really enjoyed that first video, Brex, about the, you know, uh, uh, the tourists, the, the, the larger picture around tourism all over the world, really. We write about that a lot in preview. So thank yes. you for that. Um, I am encouraging people to send your questions. I see a couple here. Um, uh, there are some that are specific that I think you'll get back to people after, but uh, anything you're um, asking uh, Brett for, now's the time. I do have one about the weather. <laughs> people always ask about the weather. So nice. what are your seasons like and what is the best time uh, for a group to visit Flanders? Now the weather is um, well. The weather is the weather. It, it means it's, it's sometimes unpredictable, um, but generally uh, we enjoy a mild climate. Um, I always like to compare the Flanders weather to the weather in um, unpredictable in terms of rain or clouds or shine, uh, but never extreme. Uh, we don't get the extreme cold. We don't get the extreme. Um, ice and snow at two meters high or never the extreme uh, heat in summer with some exceptions of course especially uh, this year um, but we like to promote Flanders for travel uh, weather-wise year-round um, because there's stuff to do 
um, all the time. In the summer, you have the open air concerts, as, as I pointed out. Uh, in the winter, you have the, the Christmas markets. Um, and year-round, traditionally, in many of the Flemish city centers, you have the, the Sunday markets. So it, it is a nice place uh, to visit um, four seasons long. Okay, I've got a question uh, after the weather, I guess people always ask about connectivity. <laughs> so tell us about the Wi-Fi um, in these cities that you mentioned, uh, especially around, you know, you're talking about large association conventions and facilities, a lot of them sound new, um, but some of them are, are more historic. Yes. So, so um, it's a good question. So especially, so, all the venues that we promote um, and in terms of uh, conference space um, need to adhere to a certain standard, the standard set by the Convention Bureau. So, uh, and of course, Wi-Fi uh, technology, um, but also accessibility for, um, you know, disabled, like all of those criteria um, are very important. So, um, so, in general, um, that's taken care of. Uh, and, and okay. Can you share some examples of conventions you have hosted with a little bit of detail about where they, uh, you know, facilities they used and some of the highlights of what they did while they were there? Um, yes. Um, I mean, in terms of conferences, um, <clears throat> We had Bruges, we had the vacation, it's just off the top of my head. Uh, we had Vacation Rental Managers Association. If they're in the audience, hello, and uh, thanks for joining us. Um, but they were in Bruges, I think two years ago. And they were at, um, they had their conference. It was a smaller conference. It was about 300 people. And they had their meetings at the St. John uh, Hospital, which is um, a former hospital in the Middle Ages but it's again transformed into a meeting space. And uh, they were comfortably met over there in, in the larger uh, auditorium. And then all the breakout rooms are actually in the uh, former hospital uh, rooms, but they are really large rooms. Um, hospitals looked a little different uh, back in the day. Um, so, and then for their offsites, I know they went to the provincial court, which is in the heart of Bruges, uh, which is a formal, um, yeah, a royal palace, I should say, uh, that sits right in the market square. And hotel-wise, they were divided in over three or four hotels in the city center, uh, but everything is walking distance. So um, they truly had a really nice experience uh, in Bruges. Um, a more recent example was actually uh, two months ago, we had um, a music group. Their name escapes me, but um, it was a group, an American group of, um, singers, um, orchestra players, and they combined three cities. So there were two days in Brussels, two days in Ghent, and two days in Brew. Um, and they really combined those three cities, and there were about 200 people. And, um, and I just had a conversation with uh, the organizer, and they had a really great time. Um, Belgium is easy to get around in, uh, even when you're moving a larger group. Um, so it is definitely something that we like to recommend. If you have, for instance, your conference in Brussels, it's very easy to have a post conference in Antwerp or Bruges or the other way around or have an offsite dinner. Um, so I'm very happy to talk more about this um, person who asked the question. Okay. And uh, along those lines, are you going to be at personally be at IMAX and what is your boot? Oh, so um, I will send you the booth number in the follow-up email because I don't know it by heart, but the booth is the Belgian booth and okay. I'll be there the whole time. I'll be, You'll there. be there personally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, another question from Diana. Uh, do most of the hotel and conference center uh, personnel speak English? Yes. Um, the answer is yes. So um, Belgium has three official languages. So Flanders, the region that we promote, is Dutch speaking, obviously. And then the southern part of Belgium is French speaking. And then we have a part in the east that's uh, German speaking. So uh, those three languages are official. So a Belgian naturally has a 
tendency to learn languages because that's what we have to do in school. And then again, you have English as a global language, and uh, it is widely spoken um, in Brussels, of course, but also in Flanders. Uh, many of the TV shows we get uh, growing up uh, are subtitled. Um, so English is kind of uh, part of, um, you know, our, of who we are, right. so, uh, especially in the hospitality sector, um, no issue. Okay. We have many international interns coming from schools, uh, UK or Germany, come to Flemish hotels um, for internships and, stuff. and the speaking language is uh, English. Okay, great. Uh, another question, what is the square footage of the average breakout room? That's pretty specific, but maybe you could give us a ballpark of facilities. Yeah, um, that is pretty specific. Um, naturally, so the larger convention centers, I'm talking about uh, Brussels and Antwerp. So in Antwerp, you have the, uh, the Flanders Convention Center. They have about 20 breakout rooms, but they range from yeah, uh, they really range. So um, what I want to do, is, if people want to know uh, breakout rooms footage, and uh, I'm happy to send you those. Uh, uh, okay. Depends what you want, if it's for an exhibition or it's, if it's a breakout. Right. right. Um, and is there that kind of information on your website? <clears throat> um, it's not on our website. Okay. Uh, but once we can get more specific, okay. uh, yeah, we, we can get it. We can line that up. Uh, another um, one of our uh, audience members asked uh, before you mentioned a couple uh, particular conference that did a, a trio of destinations. What are some of the combinations that a group would do if they were to meet in your region? What are the most popular combinations? Um, well, the combinations are endless. So, and what still happens most of the time is that uh, people will just choose one city um, because it is convenient and people like okay. in their hotel. Um, and, and that's, you know, and what will happen is, for instance, they will have their meeting in Antwerp and then they'll go for an offsite to like a castle because uh, Belgium has the largest amount of castles per square uh, meter, per square kilometer in, in Europe. <laughs> So there's many offsite venues. So that will happen most of the time where people will be in one city at a time and then go for an offsite dinner or event. Um, but it happens that people combine cities. Um, and combinations are oftentimes the capital is in there, uh, Brussels. Uh, especially first time visitors uh, want to see the capital and be in Brussels. Um, but again, depending on the conference, um, depending on the theme of the conference and the, uh, the organization, um, there may be more connections with one city than the other uh -huh. in terms of expertise that is there when it comes to, let's say, if it's about, if your conference is about biotech or chemistry or life sciences, you may be very good in Antwerp. Or if it's more about art, culture, gastronomy, then maybe Bruges is more interesting. So um, again, we are here to help you think along. Help you take the moment. Terrific. I think we have time for one more question. I um, I think this is a perfect way to sum up your your presentation. If uh, you were to just choose a, a couple of the key reasons, uh, uh, specifically associations, um, say would choose Flanders over other destinations in Europe, what would you say they are? I would say for us that. Um, key reason that associations like to come to us and are comfortable organizing in Flanders is the fact that we have such a well-established network, not only within our organization. Um, since 2017, we have actually three international association experts uh, working uh, for us that do nothing else but research and connect, meaning connect um, the industries that I've mentioned, but also the universities, the professors. So making sure that the expertise is at the disposal of the organization that wants to come to Flanders. Uh, that I would say is one big reason people like to come to us because you want the relevant uh, professors, you want the relevant expertise um, to make sure that um, 
there is a legacy. You want to make sure that your association conference, uh, that your attendees take away something. And we as a convention bureau want to make sure that whoever comes over also leaves a legacy for us, for our university students. And we really want to connect your knowledge and our knowledge and really create a beautiful symbiosis. I would say this is the main reason. Another reason is, of course, um, accessibility, but also price quality difference. Um, oftentimes, when it comes to, when you put us next together, uh, other cities in Europe, um, we oftentimes have uh, the more affordable deal. Okay. Well, that is the perfect note on which to, uh, I think, to close this great, uh, great experience with you. Thank you, Breck, for being here. Um, everyone will receive a follow-up with the uh, booth information and, and other info from Breck directly. And he will also be choosing the lucky winner of the um, tours for either the fall or spring. Uh, don't forget the chocolates. He will be giving out chocolates at IMAX. Always an important, uh, <laughs> important part of this presentation. So I want to thank you for being here, uh, Brett, and thank you to the audience. Have a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you, you too.